Alrighty, so welcome back to, a, to another very, very special episode of Broken Sylvia where the car finally has an engine in it. To start this episode off, I'll be showing you how the engine got stripped of all its accessories, wire brushed and spray painted black with just normal black engine enamel. Then we'll move over to these rocker covers. The rocker covers got uh, paint stripped back to bare metal, primed and painted. Unfortunately, the thinners I used with my paint had a weird reaction, so I'm going to have to redo these covers. For the people doing it at home, I would highly recommend skipping the paint stripper stage. It's a nasty chemical, it stinks. If you don't wear nice thick gloves, it'll sting, your, uh, it'll sting, it'll burn your skin. That's the word, it'll burn your skin. So skip that stage, just get them sandblasted. Moving over to the inlet manifold. So the inlet manifold from factory is an RB26 part and it comes very, very textury. So I used 40 grit on a flap disc to knock down all the, all the, uh, I don't know, waviness, I guess you could call it. So that was nice and flat. After that, I used 80 and 120 grit on a palm sander to refine it a little bit. And then this part got sent over to the powder coaters. The powder coating being nice and thick, it filled in all the scratches. Then it was put in the oven. And now this part here, looks as nice as the rest of the intercooler piping. So without me doing much more talking, I'll let the video do its thing. So now comes the part of where the sump has to come off. I did it for a few reasons. Reason number one is the engine hadn't been started in a very long time and I just wanted to double check if there was any sludge in the bottom of the sump. 
And reason number two, it's a lot easier to take a sump off while it's out of the car instead of in the car. Take it off quickly, reseal it, and it's good to go. So now comes the exciting part of me telling you how you can adapt RB26 individual throttle bodies to an RB25 engine. In this case, this is an RB25 Neo engine out of an R34 GTT Skyline, and we are also still using the VCT and keeping the VCT solenoid in its factory position. So to start things off, the RB25 head and the RB26 head do not share the same bolt pattern. So to get around that is you order these plates from Ataku Garage. These plates are 20 millimeters in thickness that allow you to change the bolt patterns. So pretty much they're two plates. So one plate is your RB25 bolt pattern. Then the other plate is your RB26 uh, bolt pattern. So that's sorted. That's issue number one. Issue number two is the VCT solenoid is going to hit the factory water neck. Pretty much, you can either relocate the VCT solenoid, which can be quite a pricey exercise. I have seen kits get sold for $400, or you could just find yourself a good fabricator and he'll do it for less than $100. So pretty much, this water neck has to go underneath the solenoid. Factory, it would hit the solenoid. So you just have to get this water neck to go underneath the solenoid. Then the bottom water neck from factory goes up, which means it hits the bottom of the plenum. So again, you're going to chop that water neck off and get it rerouted for it to go at a lower angle so it does not hit the plenum. What else are you going to have to do? Um, oh, and then your factory oil cooler, delete that, throw it in the bin. That is rubbish anyways. All you're going to have to do is get like a Gretty, an Aeroflow or something, just an oil relocation kit. So you can run an external oil cooler, also run that oil filter somewhere where it's easily accessible. And yeah, because that factory oil cooler also hits the plenum. Reasons for doing it is, I don't like ready manifolds, I don't like Freddy manifolds. They're quite affordable, um, you can get them, bolt them on and you're good to go. The manifold I do like is the Hypertune plenum, which I cannot justify paying for a car like this. So, to go for an OEM finish um, and to make the engine bay look nice and presentable, and also the individual throttle bodies will give you a nicer throttle response, which is a bonus. So that's why for about $1,000, I did this conversion. Firstly, you'll see in the video, what I did is I used paper gaskets, throw them in the bin, I had to redo everything, use metal gaskets. In my case, I used the Tomei metal inlet manifold gaskets through the RB26 side. And then on the side closer to the head, I just used, I'm pretty sure it was like a Kemetic, uh, also a metal inlet gasket. And then between the two plates, I used ultra gray gasket sealer because when I spoke to the guys from Otaku, that's what they told me to use. Now I spoke to a guy that has done the same conversion from GS Auto Works in Perth. And what he said is, take everything off and get the plates sandblasted. When you get those aluminium plates sandblasted, the surfaces aren't shiny anymore and they have a nice textured finish, which means the moment you start slapping gaskets on it and you put the gasket maker through, everything, because it's got a bit of a texture and it's porous, 
it's going to have something to stick to one another and it's going to seal properly. Very, very simple. I'll add more clips um, so you can graphically see it. Very simple process. You can do it for about $1,000. Really all comes down to how much you pay for the manifold. I think I paid about $500. So yeah. So as you guys just saw in the previous clip, the hot side and the cold side are on. On the cold side, uh, it was just purely to show you guys the process of how to do it. Everything got taken off, as you saw, the plates were still shiny, don't worry, the plates got sandblasted. Then you probably saw me use paper gaskets, those paper gaskets went in the bin, they got replaced with the metal ones, everything got redone on that side. Then on this side, the exhaust manifold, the back of the turbo and the screamer pipe got sandblasted and ceramic coated. Firstly, so it looks new again, and secondly, to keep temperatures down in this engine bay. So to make the engine bay extra special, we deleted the ABS. Is it legal? I'm not sure. Luckily, these cars did come factory uh, without ABS, some of them. This specific model, my car here, is a factory ABS car. It did get deleted. Um, if you ever have to go past inspection of pits, I'm sure you could um, use the argument of some of them did come without ABS in it if they really picked on you, but being everything being so clean and looked after, I don't think I, I should have problems one day, even though the car is still registered. But I use the GK Tech uh, ABS Delete Kit. It comes with four lines, again, just like any other GK products I've used, super easy to install. And yeah, I tucked the line under that little sill panel so it's not even visible. These videos are purely for entertainment, so I'm not gonna explain to you how 
I set my brakes up, maybe I didn't do it properly. Um, so I don't want people following these videos and getting into accidents or something. So yeah, I'm just gonna show you how I use some nice rib nuts. When you go to drill the holes into your firewall, um, you're going to take paint off it. So uh, what I did is I found the color match paint to this car, just a little bit that I had left over, put it in a bottle cap, and I just dabbed that rib nut into the paint so when it goes into the firewall of the car and it expands, um, that part that is uh, bare metal from drilling is sealed up with paint so it doesn't rust. I have seen it uh, like in my boot where the battery was, where the rib nuts got put. Um, yeah, you can see it rusting around purely because it wasn't sealed up. So yeah, just a bit of dab of some paint. Squeeze it, it'll expand. Yeah, it's a good bit of kit. Really happy with how it looks. Makes the engine bay look really clean. So yeah, do it. So this video is slowly coming to an end. Even though the engine went in that night, as you guys saw in the previous little clip, I was freaking out. I was texting people that had RB swapped S14 and 15 Silvias because it is the same process. They, I think the chassis are either the same or very similar. Now these guys were using A31 Safiro or R32 GTST cross members, which make the engine sit lower. While in my case, I'm using R33 engine cross member and engine mounts. So, when I had a look at the engine and there was no gearbox in it, it was tilting past the fender and I started freaking out because everything was fabricated, everything was done, all that it needed to be done was assemble the car. Now I was like, whoa, what if we have to start getting things refabricated to make the engine sit lower? By no means, I am not crazy that I'm ever gonna cut this bonnet. I love the OEM look, so that was just not an option for me. Luckily the next day Danny and I came in, we dummy fit this gearbox and tilt that engine back to where, uh, to where it's supposed to sit and the bonnet was placed over the car, super happy with how everything fits, still needs to be aligned, um, yeah the bonnet needs to go up a bit and everything needs to be kind of shimmed into place, but now comes the big news that you've been waiting for. So the R34 Skyline project, the project budget GTR. The parts have been ordered, the, most of the parts are already in. We're still waiting on a side skirt and a right hand side quarter panel to come in from Japan. Thank you to Abdul from Total Nissan in Cannington for making it such an easy and quick process. He got me a good discount on the parts and he got the parts in in no time. The parts, literally in less than two weeks, we have 80% of the parts to start slowly building that car. Also, thank you for Dan to Dan for allowing me to use his GTR front end to make sure everything is in place before that radiator spot on that car gets finally welded in. Because as you guys saw, the car is a crash, it was in a crash and the radiator spot needs to be replaced. So yeah, this video had a little bit more talking than usual. Uh, I asked the feedback in the previous episode and a few of you guys said, just go into a little bit more detail about what you're doing. So hopefully it wasn't too boring with me just yapping on, but yeah. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the videos, click the subscribe button. Plenty more videos on these builds. Skyline will be even better than this car. For less money, hopefully. So yeah, it'll be good. Thanks for watching.